Hello, welcome to another tutorial and today you're in for a cool Flutterflow update. So Flutterflow just launched a, f a new feature and it's called Flutterflow Local Run. It's a feature that, that will allow you to run your Flutterflow project on your local PC. So you do not have to hit reload over and over and over and over again and wait for like maybe 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes depending on your P PC strength and on your network. So you see, before now, you would have to click on this button right here and you would have to test your application, right? And you wait and wait and wait for sometimes five, 10 minutes, like I said before, before it runs. But now, Flutterflow now have this feature called Flutterflow Local Run. And first thing that you have to do is to download the Flutterflow desktop app if you don't have the Flutterflow desktop app, it's not going to work, but it's only available for Mac OS. So Windows guys, don't worry. You can see coming soon over here. It's going to, it's going to work. Let's just say a few weeks, let's say a few days, you know, you can hope and pray that it's going to come to you very, very soon. So once you have this desktop app, the next thing you want to install is Flutter. So Flutter is the building block of Flutterflow. You can see that these screens are really familiar, right? These screens are really familiar. Flutter is the building block of Flutterflow and you need to have Flutterflow, Flutter installed on your PC, right? If you want to know if it's installed, you can come here and just, and um, you can come here, right? If you want to know if Flutter, Flutter is installed in your application, you can just come here and type uh, which Flutter. So you can see which Flutter, it's going to tell you where Flutter, Flutter, where Flutter not Flutterflow, we have Flutter is installed in your PC. And the second thing you need to have is CocoaPod. Uh, CocoaPod is a library. It's a very, very huge library. Uh, that makes, just, just imagine CocoaPod as the library that enables um, C projects to run on your PC, right? Uh, it's a library, trust me, you don't really have to understand so much. It's just so, so many things. So if you want to check on your, check your PC to see if you have CocoaPod on your PC, just come here and type which pod, right? It's going to tell you if you have it. So I already have it, right? But if you do not have it, you can click here and you'll, you know, you'll figure out how to add CocoaPod to your PC. So I already have it and um, that's right. So it just... On your terminal, just simply copy this on your terminal, copy it, come to your terminal and just paste it. So once you paste it, hit enter, you will see a lot of things loading and loading and loading for ages. And after that, it's going to tell you that it's updated, <laughs> right? That's the only thing you have to do. So as somebody who doesn't code, you don't have to give it, you don't have to worry so much about any of this stuff. So once you're cool with that, the next thing you have to install S code, right? S code is super awesome. You go to the um, store, the Apple store, and then you type S code right there and you install it. Depending on your internet strength, it could take a while, you know. Some, somehow S code is one of the largest, one of the largest files I have in my PC. Very large. You can see it's right here. This one, it's very, very large. It's one of the largest files I have. 3.4 gigabyte. And then once you're cool with that, you would have to update S code to install the simulator, right? Don't worry, that's going to download itself. You just have to say you want the simulator in your application and it's going to work. So once you're good with that, this is how, what the simulator looks like. This is an iPhone X, iPhone X. So this is an iPhone X. You can open a simulator for iPhone 15, sorry, iPhone 13, iPhone 12, iPhone 14. It depends on what you want to test with and that's what's going to give you right that's going to be i think around 7.5 gigabyte if you decide to install it this way it's going to be around 7.5 gigabyte we have the s code itself 3.5 gigabyte the simulator 7.5 gigabyte so if you add everything together that's about 11 gb uh on the 11 gb of file on your pc for this to run and cool about your simulator you can actually use it like your uh, you can actually use it just like any other thing, right? You can use it just like any other phone, you know, just that you can't take this phone out of the house. It has to be on your PC. For example, I can browse here just check out my website and it's just super cool. So you can see, this is me checking out my website right here and I can do anything you want to do with the PC. I can test it with landscape. I can test landscape and I can test, um, uh, a portrait if I want to 
So that's for that. Go ahead and install that. That's just what it is. And then the next thing that we want to do is to open your Flutterflow, you know, open your Flutterflow desktop and choose your project. So when you open your Flutterflow desktop, this is what you're going to see right, right here. And you go ahead and choose your project. Choose your project and come to your settings, come to uh, platforms and see the platform you want to OK. So default is Android and iOS, but there's also web, there's Mac OS, there's Windows, and there's Linux. But I don't really care so much about these other three. I just like iOS, Android, and the web. So I'll come back here. And for the web, do you make sure that you install Chrome. If you don't have Chrome, it's not going to work. I think I skipped that earlier. Do you make sure you install Chrome. If you don't have Chrome, it's not going to work on your PC. So I'll come back right here, and I would say local run so for the first time it's going to ask you to configure it for the very first time that first time is going to in install flutter sdk again so the reason you have flutter already but the reason is just because to just make sure you're not missing any dependencies right dependencies are just tiny codes that make your your app run right oh skip so then you're going to choose your devices so i choose three devices ios mac os and chrome and then you're going to test and it will run so Let's just run this application right now. We'll click right here and I'm going to test on this iOS. I'll test on, um, I'll test on I, I, iPhone X. So that's our test and I'll click on the test. So just wait for a while. And before you know it, the app should appear in the simulator. So I know you noticed that I I changed the, the application because I had box on the other one and I didn't really have time to fix the box. So you can see that this is my application and I can create an account. I can log in if I want to. I can reset my password and I can go back. So it's working just the same way it's working on the simulator. And I can just, so I'm gonna use my part, my application. So it's an audio note. So it's an application that allows you to take note via audio. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to be launching this application soon, so you could find it on the Play Store. I'm going to create my account, old demo 94 at gmail.com. So, this is a real account. Password. Um, so, this is 9. And this is 9. So, I'm going to create an account. So here we go. There's nothing. It's a fresh account. I'm going to, so I need to talk to the application, right? So next thing you're going to be hearing, it's not me teaching you anything. It's just me talking to my application. Say allow. So I want to create a very futuristic application that is going to tell people how to transcribe their audio into notes and they will be able to keep that note for future reference. So what it's doing is that it's translating it for me. That's what it's doing. I, I just used some playful um, animation here. So it's creating the note. And here it's saying API failed. And so the API failed. Uh, probably because the um, credit is finished for the the credit for the API call is finished, but you can see basically you're able to run it. So if I come back to my application and I add something to it, so I'm going to add something to it right away. So I just duplicated this form. So I'm going to say form two. And if I want to run it, instead of going back, I'll just, I just have to say hot reload. So if I click on hot reload, I can come back to my simulator and um, can come back to my simulator, click on create account and just reload it. Just wait. Oh, restarting the application. So you can see what we've got. You can see it's as fast as possible. No no trouble and no stress at all. So if I want to have this app on my Chrome, on, on I want to run it on my PC on Chrome, I just have to stop it, right? Stop it and click on the Chrome part of it. I'll take this on the way. I just want to run it on Chrome. Probably it's a web application. I'm going to test it out on Chrome. So like I said before, you need to have Chrome for this to work. If you don't have Chrome, it's not going to work for you. So it's running a local PC, so you don't really have to keep building the project all over again for for it to work. So we're just going to wait for Chrome to pop up. So 
you can see this is my application on localhost 557 95 thereabouts so this is the application i can still do what i want to do uh just hold on it's still running gonna cancel this one simulator is still running as you can see once it's done running you'll be able to use the application very well so i can create account reset account so anything i want to do with these accounts i can actually do it right here on chrome so i hope you do it i hope you've seen it so go ahead and test it out on your on your own pc let me know what you think about it send me feedback and i'll do well too you know if you have any question i'll do what to answer your question so really you might notice so one of the things you would notice is that your battery is going to drain a bit you know your, your battery is going to drain a whole lot more faster and you will likely have um some a, a bit of difficulty running your simulator at the beginning Right. So if you have any of these those difficulties, leave it in the comment section and I'll do well to help you. Probably I'll shoot another video on some of the common challenges you would have when you're running this on your PC. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in a different lesson entirely.